Let's continue our study of nomenclature by examining covalent molecules. Now we've already established rules for naming ionic compounds. Now let's make a distinction and study covalent molecules. There's two separate naming systems, one for ionic compounds and one for covalent molecules. So the trick will be to recognize if you're dealing with an ionic compound or something that's covalent. Remember that an ionic compound is a bond between a metal and a nonmetal. Let's contrast that with a covalent bond. That's an attraction between atoms resulting from the sharing of electrons, and it occurs between a nonmetal and a nonmetal. So here's the distinction. This is between two nonmetals. An ionic bond is once again between a metal and a nonmetal. So if you see a metal, if there's a metal involved, you know right away it's an ionic compound. If there's only nonmetals involved, well, that will be a covalent bond. And here are the rules for naming covalent molecules. The first element in the formula is named first, using its name. The second element is named as if it were an ion, that is, by adding the suffix "-ide." So kind of similar to before. However, we have to use a prefix to indicate the number of atoms present. Now you're probably already familiar with these prefixes. Remember the prefix for one? Mono. What about two? Di. Three is tri. Four is tetra. Five is penta. Six is hexa. Seven is hepta. 8 is octa, 9 is nona, and 10 is deca. Now, I don't necessarily know any tricks for memorizing these, just you have to buckle down and do it, I suppose. So make sure you memorize these prefixes. Okay, here's another um, fairly simple rule. The word mono is not used when naming the first atom in the formula. Also, if the second atom is oxygen, then we drop the O or the A of the prefix. Here's what I mean. Do you know what the name of this is? You probably already recognize this compound as carbon monoxide. And you probably knew how to say it correctly. Notice what you did not say. You did not say monocarbon monoxide. What you did is you dropped the mono on the first element. So you did not say mono, and then you also dropped the O or the A of the prefix. So you don't say monoxide, you just say monoxide. You kind of let it all roll off your tongue. Okay, let's practice a few of these. These should go fairly quick. This is boron, and then we have three fluorines. So boron trifluoride. This is carbon and four iodines. So carbon tetraiodide. Why don't you pause the video now um, and practice the rest of them on your own and then come back and see how you did. This is nitrogen and two oxygens. So nitrogen dioxide. This is two nitrogens and five oxygens. So dinitrogen pentoxide. This is nitrogen trihydride. The common name for nitrogen trihydride is ammonia. Ammonia is so commonly used in chemistry that you should probably just memorize it. So NH3 is called ammonia. This has two oxygens and two fluorines. So it's dioxygen difluoride. Here we have four phosphorus and three sulfurs. So tetra phosphorus trisulfide. We have one nitrogen and one oxygen. So that's just nitrogen monoxide. Hopefully you did not say mononitrogen monoxide. Remember, drop the mono on the first element and also um, be careful of, of the double vowels here. This is just monoxide. 
This next compound is dinitrogen monoxide. This stuff um, is commonly called nitrous oxide or laughing gas. It's used um, at the dentist. It's also used in, um, in cars, too, um, race cars, for example. Uh, notice that um, there's a difference between nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen monoxide. These are very different things. Let's see what you wrote down for this. Did you write down dihydrogen monoxide? Maybe you did. Of course, maybe a, a better word would just be water. Uh, but dihydrogen monoxide is the correct official name for water. Four phosphorus and six oxygen. So tetra phosphorus hex oxide.